Hey everyone, Francis Bo here, and welcome to the Bo Show. And it's it's the moment we've all been waiting for. It's BotCon 2015. We've gotten all the reveals out of the way. I've got all of the things we need to talk about right here. And this is going to be a long video. I, I'll guarantee that this is going to be a long video. Um, I don't know how long it's going to be, but we are going to cover every single thing that I heard about from BotCon, down to the Robots in Disguise, Combiner Wars, Col Collector's Club, Figure Subscription Service, talking about every single thing they showed us. Now, before we get started, I'm going to say that I am not going to be covering the Rescue Bots and the Creo stuff, because nothing new happened there. So, uh, so let's get down to it, because I am not wasting any time. So, uh, with Robots in the Skies, there's not that many big announcements, but just to run it down for you guys, uh, for the Legion classes, it's Night Ops, Night Ops Bumblebee, and Alpine Strike Sideswipe. Um, I don't collect Legion classes, so that is not my, don't really care for them. Um, but Alpine Strike Sideswipe is a Red Alert reference, they even said it, the Hasbro booth, so that's cool. Um, for the one-step changers, it is Night Mode, Bumblebee, and Ninja Sideswipe. Same paint job, some ideas, same mold, same opinion. So there's that. Uh, Warrior Classes, that is the Night Ops, Bumblebee, and Gold Armor, Grimlock. Um, Night Ops, Bumblebee is... It's, it's okay, I mean, I don't really care too much for it. I mean, it's not really the best thing in the world for me, but... It's, it's, it's okay, I mean, it's not, the, it's not the worst thing in the world, let's put it that way. Um, I just wish they would have shot off something off a little bit better. I wish they would have shot off maybe, maybe a Warrior Class Side Swipe repaint, maybe a Jazz repaint, that'd be awesome. Uh, I don't know, Bumblebee repaint, that seems kind of common these days, so, nah. Uh, Gold Armor Grimlock is a G1 inspired toy. They said that they're trying to get past some of the what they use for color scheme, they're trying to go copper, not the uh, the gold the the, uh, the chrome they use. They're gonna use the try to use copper, so that's nice. Um, he looks good. I like the G1 and in, in, in the G1 thought. I mean, I didn't really think they were gonna do it. That most likely it's gonna be like a maybe a an exclusive of some sort, maybe a next year's Comic Con or something. But that's nice that they actually thought about it and they're actually gonna sell it uh, retail value. So. It's pretty cool and I actually really appreciate that. So thank you, Hasbro. Thank you for not making me pay 75 bucks for a few deluxe classes. You know what I'm talking about. Um Alright, uh the last thing that they kind of revealed to us was was a three-step changer, you no know, side swipe. Um I don't really care for the three-step changers. I mean I reviewed the Grimlock and Bumblebee, and you know I've pretty much have said in my review in that review that you know they're meant for kids and the side swipe is no different, so yeah, that's that. I'm also not gonna cover the mini cons. Let's say that because I don't really care for that. So one page done. All right, all righty then. Let's get down to the combiner war stuff because there is a lot to go through, and I will make sure to get all of it. I'm trying to go through it. I got everything. I got everything. So so let's start off. Um, let's start off with the fan built combiner. So. It is in ta it is a Victoria Victorian, as you guys already know. Um, for global vault votes, it got two hundred and fifty-five thousand. That's a lot of votes for a fan built combiner. They showed off concept art that's online if you guys want to see it, so you guys can check it out. And it is the first female combiner, so um, I like the look of it. I like the look of the Victorian. Victorian, sorry, I have to get used to the name Victorian. Um, I like that's the first female combiner, and I like that they're taking inspiration from the fans, and they're not just going to go make a new one. They're actually reaching out for the fans, and I'm glad that they're still doing this fan-built thing, because Windblade, I think, was kind of a success. I mean, it wasn't the best thing in the world, but at least that they took inspiration from fans, and Windblade's been kind of a prominent character for a lot of things. She's been in IDW Comics, she's got a toy, she's going to be in the Robots in Disguise cartoon, so yeah, she's pretty big. And I'm hoping Victoria, Victorian follows the same suit. I hope that she does get a little bit more of an, out of it than just a fan built thing. So uh, that's pretty interesting. So um, I cannot wait to see a toy of it. They didn't, we didn't get to see a toy. Um, I have a feeling that we're 
we're most likely not going to get it at Comic Con. Most likely, we're not going to go to. My prediction is we're probably going to get it at the end of the year, or if not this year, we're going to get a toy fair because that's mainly where they show up a lot of things. Um, but for me, honestly, I think we're going to get get it this year because it just seems like they've already gotten a lot of things ready for it, and I think they might be they they might be hinting at a reveal. So maybe, maybe not. Who knows? So, oh, uh, so that's that. So. All right, let's get down to Combiner Wars. We're gonna start off with Wave Four. Now, everything that I say about Wave Four, it comes out this year, 2015. Everything that I say at this point of Wave Four, anything of Wave Four on the name, it is coming out in 2015. So keep that in mind. So Legends Class Wave Four consists of Rodimus and Skywarp. We've already seen these before. Rodimus is a repaint of Blackjack, and Skywarp is just that usual uh, Star Screen mold that they always use. Um, I don't really care for any of them. I mean, Skywarp is just a you know your obvious repaint, and Rodimus is just a it's just a mold that really doesn't suit him. And um, I like that mold, but it it does not suit Rodimus. So yeah, kind of kind of not working for me. Um, I wish they would have used those mold the Blackjack mold in a better use. Like I don't know what you could have used that mold for. Um, I don't know what you could turn that into actually. Maybe a hot shot repaint or something like that. I'm not sure, but there were a bit more prominent ones than just the Rodimus because that seems a little bit, a little bit more obvious and a little bit more out there. So, I mean, I don't mind it, but nah, I don't really care for it. So, uh, like I said, Skywarp is just your casual repaint. They've been using that mold so many, that mold so many times. I think the first time they did was in a reveal the shield, was it, or was it? Yeah, it was Reveal the Shield, I think. Um, yeah, 2011, I believe. So it's been like four years since we've been using that mold. So, yeah, I told you. Every Starscream, we get a repaint of it. So it's going to be another, another Starscream that we have used for four more years. So, yeah, I don't mind it. So there's that. Uh, let's get down to the Deluxe Classes Wave 4. It is... um, it, um It's a mix. We'll, we'll talk about it. Um, we'll first start off with... Mirage. Now, we knew that Mirage was going to use a drag strip mold. We knew it was going to use the drag strip mold. And uh, the vehicle mode looks fantastic. It looks great. It definitely reminds me of the G1 Mirage. It definitely pays an homage to the G1 Mirage. And it definitely feels like G1 Mirage. So it hits all the right spots. Then the robot mode. Um, I'm kind of mixed on it. I mean, I like it, but it's... It's, it's not really big. I mean, I was expecting a little bit more out of that repaint. I, I, I expect Takara to improve upon it once we see it on their version. But uh, I don't think that the paint job was that good. I think they could have done a little bit better on it. But I'm expecting Takara to improve it. But I don't know. I think that repaint... I think that I'm happy that we got a Mirage. I'm just not happy that what it turned out to be. I just want it to be a little more than just what we got. So it's nice. I mean, I love the vehicle mode. I will definitely buy it just for the vehicle mode. But the robot mode, I need to look a little bit, see a little bit more. Um, next one is Prowl, who is using the Streetwise mold, um, or sorry, the Dead End mold. Let me think. I'm trying to remember what the name was. Um, it wasn't the Dead End mold. It was the uh, man. What was the name? What was the name? I'm trying to remember what his name was. It'll come back to me in a second. Um, wasn't Dead End. I know what his name was. I know. I know the. the, the uh, it's it's using the Dead End mold. Let's say that. So, uh, I really like it. I really like the the prowl. Um, it's. I'll admit. Okay, the the robot mode is a little bit not painted well. I think. There should be more paint applications, I expect. You know, the car is obviously going to do better. Uh, the vehicle mode looks great. I really like it. Very futuristic. Uh, robot mode definitely invokes Prowl. Not perfectly, but it gets the point across. And I think that it gets across pretty well. So I like it. And I'll definitely pick it up if I find it. So there's that. Okay. Uh, the next two are... Uh, the next two are not pretty. They're not pretty. So we'll start off with Sunstreaker. He was using who is using the breakdown mold. Okay. 
the vehicle mode is good. It's good. I mean, I can get across the vehicle mode. The robot mode doesn't really translate Sunstreaker. I mean, the head definitely invokes Sunstreaker, but... I... No, it doesn't work. I mean, I think... They should have improved it a little bit better, but... Uh... No, it, it doesn't work. I, I really think it's not the best thing that we saw, but... Eh... It doesn't really translate well Sunstreaker. Um, yeah, I might pass on this. It's not really the... I'm not saying I might not pass on. I'm saying that if I find it, I'm. It won't be the first time. If I see it for the first time on stores, I might not pick it up. So, yeah. There's the. I don't know. I'm a little bit disappointed on that one. Um, the other one that I'm really disappointed about, and should have been a little bit better, is Ironhide. Ironhide is using the off-road off-road mold, and I am very disappointed in this. <laughs> This should have been a little bit better. I mean, the vehicle mode translates well. I mean, it reminds me a lot of the GDO Ironhide. You know, that leader class Ironhide from GDO. Reminds me a lot of that. But the robot mode, there's not that much paint on it. And it doesn't really translate well as Ironhide. And it just doesn't look like Ironhide. It should have been a little bit better. So, yeah, I'm not really happy with that one. They definitely need to improve upon that one because that one doesn't look that good. And... I'm not happy with that one, so, yeah, I might pass on it, so, there's that. So, alright, now let's move up to the uh, Voyager classes um, for Wave 4. Um, we are getting a new Optimus Prime, but it's in a new, it's in a white, in a white paint job. They're calling it Battle Core Optimus Prime. Its head is based off Star Convoy. Um, I don't care for this. I seriously don't care for it because... There's no good paint on it. It doesn't translate well as Optimus Prime. And it's using basically the same toy with a new head sculpt painted in white. That's it. That's all they did. And I kind of hate that. And yeah, I'm not really that good. It doesn't look that good. He'll be forming the torso of Optimus Maximus. And I saw Optimus Maximus and... I don't like that at all. I don't like the combiner mode at all. Stay in your in the separate mode, separate robot modes. That seems a little bit better. So, yeah, I, I might pass on this. Also, this is just not a. This is just something I would not. I'm not interested in. So, I don't know. I really need to see more pictures. So, yeah, I'm not really buying it. So, yeah, kind of disappointing. Um, and the last thing out of wave four is the leader classes. And the leader class is, in fact, Starscream. We've already saw pictures of it a little while back, and I've already given you a little bit of my opinion on it. And I did tell you in my predictions that Starscream was going to show. I did say that, so it was a definite coming. And they said it's based off the G1 toy. Not the G1 cartoon design, the G1 toy. So, a little bit different there. Um, I've already given my, you my opinion about the Starscream. It looks great. I think it looks definitely translate well to Starscream. I love the jet mode, and... Just looks great, and I just wish there's more paint applications, but it looks great for what it is, and I will definitely pick it up if I find it. So, there's that. Second page done. So, so that was for 2015. Everything that I just said right there, that was for 2015 releases. So now what I'm about to tell you is all the Combiner War stuff coming out in the spring of 2016. So let's start it off with the Legends class figures. Um, we are getting a new buzzsaw. I did not expect to get hear about a new buzzsaw. Now, when I first heard it, when I first heard of word of the buzzsaw, I immediately thought that we were getting a new sound wave. I immediately thought we were getting some someone. And is this included? Is this you know? Is this trying to? Are they trying to tell me that we are going to get a new sound wave? Because we've already seen you know we've already seen the blueprints you know for Titan Wars, which they. Which you know they're gonna announce at Comic Con for a blaster. So is that is that is this telling me that we're gonna get a sound wave also? Because if we are, I would buy the heck out of a new sound wave. Because especially if, if if since blaster is looking like that, like check out the blueprint. If you see what blaster looks like in that blueprint, he looks definitely like a G1 blaster. And if they were going in the same route and they bring out a sound wave, that works. That would definitely work. So, 
if we are going to get a new sound wave, like, mark my words, if we do get a new sound wave, there's a reason why, okay? There's a reason why they announced this buzzsaw. It's not just because they announced it just for a new toy. They announced the buzzsaw for a reason. So, they're going to announce something bigger at Comic-Con that will involve buzzsaw. So, there's that. Um, the, the one Legends class figure that I am so happy that they announced, and I will later tell you why I loved, I liked that, how, why they announced it, is Shockwave. They revealed Shockwave for a Legends class, and he looks really good. He definitely invokes G1 Shockwave. He's probably the best, not the best appearance of Shockwave in a, in a modern Transformers toy. I still think the Beast Hunters toy is still probably the best shock, modern Shockwave to date. But it's definitely up there with the Beast Hunter Shockwave, and it's a new mold, and it definitely invokes Shockwave, and it definitely gives me a feel of Shockwave. And it has the gun mode! The gun mode! It's just awesome! Finally, no more tank mode, nothing like that. It's just the straight up uh, gun mode, so that's awesome. Definitely happy with that, so. So definitely happy with that. Very happy. Um, next up is Chop Shop, who is a. Straight up repaint of shrapnel. Um, I don't care for it. I kind of like the little chop shot that we got with the Legends Megatron. So, yeah, don't care. Do not care one bit. Uh, same thing goes for the next reveal, which is Pipes, which is a straight repaint of Optimus Prime and and the Huffer re, 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 remold. Yep, don't care. Um, next one is Rekgar for the Legends class, and he is gonna. When I first saw it. When I first saw the photos, I immediately I thought immediately that this was a new mold. But after looking at it a little bit better, it is a repaint of Combiner Wars Legends class groove. So there's that. So you know that's very interesting that they would go do that. Um, I don't really know why they would do it because we already have a deluxe class Rekgar, but you know it's interesting. So there's that. Okay, let's get down to the deluxe classes, and um, let's start off with the one that's the most interesting one, um, Wheeljack. Wheeljack is getting a new toy, well not a new toy, but it's an, he's getting a new toy that's a repaint. Wheeljack is a repaint of the breakdown mold, and such a missed opportunity. I mean, when I look at the toy, it doesn't look complete. I mean... I get it, that's what the mold looks like, but if they just added a few more parts to it, it would have looked a little bit better. Um, that being said, though, that being said, I'm not really interested in Wheeljack. I mean, he is a, he's a good toy. I mean, I, I, it's a nice mold. I mean, I like the nice, I like the, the mold, but I still think that the best Wheeljack to date is definitely the Generations Wheeljack. You cannot defeat that Wheeljack. That's just a great looking Wheeljack. And, um, if you're, but if you mean like, you know, beyond that, you know, the Masterpiece Wheeljack is definitely the best one, but, you know, uh, retail, retail, uh, value, it's definitely the uh, Generations Wheeljack. So, that being said, I'm not really interested in this Wheeljack, but if they added a few more parts to it, it would look a little bit better because to me it doesn't look complete. It just feels, it just feels a little bit more. It just feels like there should have been more. That's why I could say it. Just feels like there should have been more to it. So, yeah, kind of, kind of let down on that one, but you know, it's, it's just what it is. Um, the next one in deluxe class is Hound. Hound is a heavy, heavy retool of Rook, and I actually really like the look of Hound. Hound is, it's not really G1-y, I'll admit that, it's not really like a G1, but it definitely invokes, it definitely gives me a feel of Hound, definitely down to the vehicle mode itself, and so, that's cool. Um, yeah, I definitely would pick it up if I find it, so. Um, next one is Smokescreen, who is a repaint of Prowl, um, it's, it's nice, I mean, it's, it's, it's cool, I mean, I don't really... Honestly, I don't really care for that one. I mean, it's something that they just did for repaints, but and it's nice to know that they did a smoke screen. Um, I think that the universe smoke screen is still definitely the best one. Or sorry, the masterpiece. They, they did a lot of masterpiece figures. Um, so yeah, I don't really. I don't know. It's not. It's a good figure, but something I don't really care for. So 
Yeah. Now, the thing I really don't care for, the thing I don't really understand, is Trailbreaker. They did an, another Trailbreaker that's using the off-road repaint, the off-road mold, and honestly, I have no idea why they did it. I don't have no idea why, because if you really, generations, we already have a trail breaker in the form of trail, you know, we already have another trail breaker, and that was a new mold, and then it became hoist. Um, it just seems kind of useless, and I think that the trail breaker is better, and I think that we already have one, so that being said, I'm not interested in trail breaker, because I already have a trail breaker toy, I don't need another one. And this one even looks worse than the other one. It's not, I'm sorry. This one looks not, it's not worse than the other one. The other one looks great, but this one doesn't look better. So, yeah, not really feeling it. So, yeah, so that's it. Um, all right, let's get down to Voyager classes. Voyager classes, they announced Skylinks. <laughs> They announced we are getting a new Skylynx. We are getting one, and oh my god, it is, it's it's not dead accurate, but it looks amazing. It looks great, and I'm really happy that we're getting a new Skylynx, and I'm kind of surprised that it's a Voyager class. I'm actually really surprised by that, but I that came out of the blue. I did not know that we were going to get a new Skylynx. I didn't even think that we were going to get a new Skylynx, but... It's really, really, really happy to know that we're getting a new Skylynx, and because he is a Voyager, because he is a Voyager, he'll be able to combine with the other Deluxe Class figures in his way, and he'll be able to form Sky Rain as the torso, and I have to admit the, to the look of it is not terrible, but, you know, I get the point across, and I'm really excited for a new Skylynx, I'm definitely going to pick it up when it comes out, and I'm really excited, so... I cannot wait for it. It looks great. If you haven't seen photos of it, go check it out. It just looks great. And it's not a perfect rep representation of the original Skylinks, but it definitely gets the point across. And it definitely looks great. And I'll definitely pick it up when it comes out in store, in stores, in Big Bad Toy Store. So, there's that. Um, now we have to get down. Last thing we need to talk about is the leader classes. Um... The leader class, the last one, I knew it. I knew they were going to do it. They announced that we were going to get a Sky Warp. And I knew they were going to announce it. I just knew it. I knew they were going to do it. And it looks great. I mean, you can't really screw up Sky Warp if you ha I've already done Thundercracker and Starscream. So, yep, we have all the Seekers now. We're going to get all the Seekers in leader class style. That's great. I cannot wait to get all three of them. And it's going to look great on the shelf. So... All right, moving on to wait. Sorry, we we forgot one little thing. They announced that we are getting the Converticons. We are getting Bruticus. So we've got to talk about that. So for deluxe classes, we got Vortex using the Alpha Bravo mold. Looks good. I really like the look of it. Um, you know, it, that was the obvious. That was the obvious uh, mold choice. There were they kind of pigeonholed themselves. They had to use the board, crank out the Alpha Bravo mold. So, so that's that's cool. Um, next one is Brawl, which is a brand new mold, and it looks great. I definitely like the look of it, and it definitely invokes Brawl, and it looks very very nice. Um, I don't think it's more slimmer. I think I still think the Fall Cybertron Brawl is better because it's more slimmed out. But I th I like the look of the new one, and it definitely looks looks like Brawl. Um, next one is Blast Off, which is a repaint of Firefly, and I, I kind of assumed that we were going to use that mold because I don't know. It seems kind of looks like a, it kind of looks like Blast Off, so it looks nice. Definitely would pick that up. And here's Swindle. I'm sorry. Next one is Swindle, and people are saying it is a new mold. I do not see it. It is a heavy, heavy remold of Rook because the chest definitely. Shows that it is Rook, so yeah, it's definitely a huge, huge remold of, of Rook. So it's not a new mold, guys. It has to be Rook. So, um, and the last Voyager is Onslaught, which is obviously a heavy retool of Hotspot. We knew that they were going to use that for Onslaught, and it looks great. It definitely invokes the original. Um, 
definitely invokes the original um, onslaught. It definitely feels like an onslaught and very, very cool. And all combined it is to form Bruticus and it looks great. It definitely invokes Bruticus. It kind of reminds me of the Warbatron Bruticus a little bit, but it definitely gets the point across and it definitely looks great. And now, let me talk about what, what, why, it's so great, why it's so great they announced that Shockwave. With the Bruticus, the Legends class figure that they always use, like, you know, they always have, like, some form of gun. Like, they use one Legends class figure as their gun. Shockwave will be that gun for Bruticus, which is a reference to the G1 episode, The Revenge of Bruticus, which is amazing. I absolutely love that they, they did that. That is amazing that they would do a reference to that, and that is so great and so creative, so... Definitely will pick that up just for that reference because that is just amazing that they would do that and I cannot wait That's gonna be such a great great wave. So So that's the stuff they announced for combiner wars and robots in the skies Let's talk about the collectors club for a second because the collectors club also had a few announcements to say and We'll first start off with the free membership figure. So every year we get a freebie figure this year's was Lyle convoy and Last year's was Rampage, so what is this next year's? The free membership figure of 2016 is Ramjet. Ramjet is in Armada, the Generations Armada Starscream repaint, and is inspired by the Universe Toys R Us exclusive Ramjet. Um, it looks nice. I, you know, it's a freebie figure, so I'll, de I'll definitely get it because I'm part of the Collectors Club, and I don't mind picking. I don't mind having it, so. Um, I, I hate the Universe Ramjet colors, but I don't know, it's it's a nice little thought. It's a thought that counts, so there's that. The first 2016 club exclusive from the Collector's Club is going to be Skywarp. Skywarp will be a Generations Armada Star Starscream repaint, and it is based off the Universe Skywarp. So, as you can see, I told you, we were going to use that Armada Starscream eventually. And we are doing it, so I'm um, smelling a thundercracker somewhere. Where is it? And here is the best thing about these exclusives. The next exclusive, the next exclusive for the Collector's Club, the second exclusive is, you know, before we announce, before I tell you, remember how they announced the Marisa Fairborn with the after Afterburner car? They announced, and this is so creative, they announced that we are getting that same concept but human forms as Rodimus and RC, which you may remember is a reference to an ep I forget what the episode's called. It's called Human Alone. I Human Only. I'm not sure what it was called, but it was when Rodimus, Ultra Magnus, Cup, and RC w got into human forms, and this was also a GI Joe crossover. So I knew that reference, and it is so creative and definitely. Definitely something that I will pick up because it is just so creative and something that I cannot believe that they would do so I will definitely pick those guys up because that is so creative and definitely something that is worth pick having in my collection so All right, all right, let's talk about the last thing from collectors club um, They announced their next figure subscription service uh, 4.0 It is indeed the mayhem attack squad now the Mayhem Attack Squad is something from the Marvel Comics and IW Comics, and I believe that Bludgeon was one of the leaders. So, also, uh, uh, what's my call? What was his name? Uh, Ruckus, I believe, was one of the leaders too. Um, f uh, Flywheels was in there too, so that's interesting. So, let's talk about what they revealed. So, the first one is Windsweeper, who was a repaint of Combiner Wars Skydive. Um, it looks nice. I like the look of it. It definitely, I don't know if it invokes the original Windsweeper, but it definitely gets the point across. So that's nice. Uh, the next one is Ruckus, who is an off-road repaint. Definitely works for that character, and I definitely would like to see that in, uh, in hand images. Um, next one is Spinister, who is an Alpha Bravo repaint. Um, it looks nice. Definitely would pick it up. It comes with Target Masters included. Um, there's also... Uh, Needlenoys, Needlenoys, I'm not sure what his name is, Needlenoys, correct me if I'm wrong there. Um, he is a Firefly repaint, Target Master included. Um, I like the look of it, looks nice. 
And the one that I like the most is Bludgeon, which is a Voyager class onslaught repaint and is inspired by the Pretender. And I really, really like the look of it. And I cannot wait to see it. Um, I cannot wait to see more in-hand images of it. And the sixth figure will will be announced soon. And for anyone who keeps their entire subscription service, they will get a bonus seven figure. And more details will be announced during this summer. So that is a lot of news to cover. And that was a the whole botcon panel. I reviewed everything they revealed revealed the Hasbro panel besides Rescue Bots and um. Uh, Creo. Um, I talked about Robots in the Sky, I talked about Combined Rewards, I talked about the Collector's Club. I talked about most things on here, so it's been a long video. Um, definitely, definitely a great BotCon. Um, there's a few things that I did not like, like the Ironhide and the Sunstreaker. I think those were not the greatest things in the world. Definitely the Trail Breaker was nothing good, too. Um, but overall, there were some great announcements. Like, I love the Bruticus announcement. I definitely love the Skylinks announcement. Um, uh, I do like the Shockwave Legends class. I, I like how it incorporates with the Bruticus. And, you know, overall, it's just a great Hello BotCon. I had a lot of fun watching the event. And, too bad, I, I kind of sad I didn't get to go because it's all the way in Illinois because it's, I can't go all the way down there. It's too far away. So, so that's that. And, so that's it for this BotCon. Um, what did you guys think of Bot Contest 15? Do you think it was great? Do you think it was not great? What do you think of the announcements? Are you guys excited for Combiner Wars? Do you guys think it's going to suck? Do you think it's going to fail? What are you guys' opinions on the new toys? Let me know. And are you guys excited for the new Skylakes and Bruticus? Let me know. So that's it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed my entire video of all the BotCon coverage. And I hope I covered everything. If I did not cover something, let me know in the comment section below. And I will give you guys an opinion about, about it because I want to give you guys my whole opinion about some of the things they announced at BotCon. So that's it for this video. Hope you guys enjoyed it. And as we always sign out, bow out!